today on Santa Monica Update. The Penmar Water Improvement Project is one step closer to completion. I'm Yana Kay. The details next. These days, toys are all about plastic and batteries. Well, coming up next, one local Santa Monica store takes us back to the simple life when toys were, well, just toys. Elementary students at Will Rogers Learning Community are really excited about recycling. I'm Yana Kay, and I'll tell you why next. We have these reports and more news about the city of Santa Monica, so keep watching. I'm Tamara Henry. Santa Monica Update. Your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. The next phase is underway at the Penmar Water Quality Improvement Project. The project is a result of a partnership between the cities of Los Angeles and Santa Monica to improve the quality of water that goes into Santa Monica Bay. Yana Kay has more. These construction workers are laying the cement on what will be the roof of perhaps the largest stormwater cistern in L.A. County. This water improvement project is part of a partnership between the cities of Santa Monica and Los Angeles to divert and treat stormwater runoff. Uh, number one, it reduces the amount of stormwater runoff that comes from our city and gets discharged in Santa Monica Bay. Instead, what this project does, it collects the runoff from our city and stores it in this uh, 5 million gallon tank and slowly releases it into the sanitary sewer system, which will be treated at the Hyperion Treatment Plant in Los Angeles, as opposed to taking the runoff from our streets and discharging it into the ocean where it will result in high bacterial uh, concentrations. Funded by Prop O Clean Water Bond, the $14 million project will be located underground at Rose Avenue, just north of Penmar Boulevard in Venice. It's a massive construction project. Yes, it's 20 foot tall. It's 180 feet in diameter. 180 feet. We okay. had to excavate some 25,000 yards of soil. Okay. Uh, approximately pouring back 3,000 yards of concrete. Okay. Uh, the walls are one foot thick. The roof will be about a foot and a half thick. The bottom of the tank is two and a half foot thick. We have 52 columns. You see these uh, rebar there? Right. Okay, we're going to have 52 of those columns that are going to support the roof. Pollutants will be removed from the stormwater in two phases. First, litter and debris will be collected from the Rose Avenue storm drain and removed here. From there, the water will be stored in the cistern and eventually pumped to the Hyperion plant for final treatment. And that helps us get towards our goal that City Council passes by 2020 that our city will be self-reliant on local water supplies. Phase two includes the installation of a disinfection treatment system. The disinfected water will then be used for landscape irrigation. This process will keep nearly 3 million gallons of untreated stormwater from reaching Santa Monica Bay. But officials say efforts to keep our waters clean don't end there. Now we need the residents to also do their part. It's important to always recycle as much as you can. Always put your trash in trash cans. Recycle your used oil. Pick up after your pets. Each one of us has the power to make a difference. And you might think, I'm only one person, but there are 10 million of us living here in Los Angeles. And when everybody does their part to keep their communities clean, that then translates into cleaner water and cleaner beaches and a cleaner Santa Monica Bay. And if everyone does their part, Santa Monica's waters and surrounding areas will be a safer and healthier place for both beachgoers and marine life alike. For Santa Monica City TV, I'm Yana Kay. The cities of Los Angeles and Santa Monica are working with environmental groups and local businesses to comply with clean water regulations. For more information, visit LAPropO.org. In a unanimous vote, the Santa Monica Landmarks Commission recently designated the Civic Center sculpture called Chain Reaction as a landmark. But considering that the 26-foot tall work of art has been damaged by salt air corrosion, it may not be around for long. Back in March, when the City Council learned of the damage, it gave supporters until November 15th to raise enough money to restore it. The amount needed has been estimated to be $250,000. This repair effort is entirely dependent on charitable contributions. If you would like to consider a donation, send it to City of Santa Monica. Cultural Affairs Division, Chain Reaction, P.O. Box 2200, Santa Monica, California, 90407, 2200.
Please make checks payable to the Santa Monica Arts Foundation. It must say chain reaction in the memo section of your check. The Santa Monica Arts Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Your contributions are tax deductible. Students at the Will Rogers Learning Community are taking recycling to a whole new level. They've been working hard collecting and sorting all kinds of discarded paper as part of the school's unique recycling campaign that is truly making a difference. Yana Kay has more. These students at Will Rogers Learning Community are on a mission. They're going to weigh all the recycled paper they've collected. We're trying to save the environment so every class could get into the green project so we can all save the energy of, of our school and also in the environment. The weigh-in is all part of a recycling campaign contest where the kids collected and sorted all those paper goods like old books that would eventually get thrown out. We are recycling it for better use of, for our planet. So instead of putting it all in the dumpster and putting it to waste, we can reuse it again. Over the course of one week, the faculty brought in large recycling bins so that the fourth and fifth grade classes could collect as much paper as possible and the class that collects the most gets free ice cream. This time we really wanted to make it an educational opportunity to teach the kids, well, paper, one ton of paper becomes 15 trees and this is how they do it. And our PTA along with our green team and student council really made a campaign to educate students and then make them really aware and excited about recycling. This is the first year for the contest. The school's green team is rallying to make the whole community greener. And it's really exciting to do because you're all part of this, like, community and stuff, it's really fun. Throughout the year, the school also installed solar panels and the students are learning to preserve energy by turning off lights and computer monitors. If we recycle, our universe will be better when we grow up. Now the fourth and fifth graders collected nearly 20 huge bags filled with paper, weighing more than 800 pounds. Now because the recycling program was so successful this year, the school plans on doing it all over again next year. For Santa Monica City TV, I'm Yana Kay. These kids say they plan to continue recycling as they grow into adults. For more information on the Will Rogers Learning Community, visit www.rogers.smmusd.org. Remember when toys were just toys? I'm talking about a time when you didn't need batteries to enjoy them and they weren't in some fancy packaging that required an engineering degree to open. One local store right here in Santa Monica has never forgotten those days and has been keeping it classic for nearly a decade. Greg Goldner has the story. These days, toys are made of plastic. They need batteries to operate and when kids are bored with them, they're thrown in the garbage. What happened to the days when toys were timeless? Well, one store in Santa Monica has never abandoned that tradition. With a passion for classic wooden toys, 10 years ago, Ellen West opened a store selling those hard-to-find, timeless, all-natural wooden toys. And almost instantly, the Acorn store became a hit. I carry toys that you treasure, you enjoy it. They're, um, they're like a piece of art. And they pass from generation to generation. It's definitely not Toys R Us, so you won't find any flashy packaging or anything that needs batteries to operate. But Ellen believes that's not necessarily what kids want. Sometimes we think the children, they're not interested to the simple toys, but they are. We just don't introduce them to them. We take them to Toys R Us, everything is electronic, and that's where they end up, and that's so what they know. And nobody believes that more than Johanna, who's been coming to the Acorn store since it opened 10 years ago. My kids' imaginations and their friends' imaginations are soaring all the time. And I really, um, I really believe that if kids are given things like this, they will make up stories and, and have things to do all day long, and they don't get bored. I have three kids, five, three, and two, and so there's a lot of batteries, a lot of noise in the house. And so my friend told me about the store pro probably about a year ago. A lot of wood, good toys, good construction, they last a long time, and the craft and art stuff. I love that kind of stuff to keep the kids busy. While the Acorn store is known for its timeless toys, another thing that customers love and you won't find on their shelves is their incredible customer service, from gift wrapping and curbside delivery to even playing meter fairy at times. Very often ask people, do they have enough money in a meter? 
because times go very fast when they come to the store because so many things to look and they forget they have a car. That's been many times I just uh, run and feed their meters. This way they have chance to stay a little bit longer and enjoy it. From their classic toys to their remarkable customer service, it's easy to see why the Acorn store has been a staple in Santa Monica for over a decade. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Greg Goldner. Talk about classic. With toys these days as disposable as tissues, the Acorn store is holding strong to what real toys have always been about. Who would have thought that nearly a decade ago, an interior designer from Czechoslovakia would have been the one to remind us that real toys are built to last and made to be passed down from generation to generation. For more information, check out the Acorn Store's website at theacornstore.com or stop by their location on 5th Street, just south of Wilshire. The Public Technology Institute has announced the winners of the 2011-2012 Technology Solutions Awards. The City of Santa Monica won two awards, one for our mobile real-time parking site, which you'll find at smgov.net slash mobile parking maps, all one word. And the other award was for our city's public information site called Be Excited, Be Prepared, which keeps citizens informed about major public works projects. You'll find it at smconstructs.org. Congratulations to everyone who assisted in putting together these websites. In June, the Santa Monica Police Department was called to a downtown site where a mountain lion had been discovered. Efforts were undertaken to safely capture the animal, but they were unsuccessful. The lion was killed to prevent it from escaping and endangering the public. In the wake of that incident, the department convened a focus group to plan for a successful outcome in terms of safety to the public as well as wildlife. To address such circumstances in the future, the Santa Monica Police Department will develop a notification system for local experts qualified in wildlife capture, provide pre-incident training to first responders to prepare them should a similar incident occur, and acquire appropriate equipment and tools related to wildlife capture. The department will also support ongoing efforts to reduce the likelihood of wildlife entering our densely populated urban environment. To get more information on this story, go to santamonicapd.org. Look under press releases. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. Have a safe and happy summer. I'm Tamara Henry, and for all of us at City TV, thank you for watching. Check it out at the Santa Monica Public Library. Keep the 4th of July spirit rolling by celebrating local history. The library has some great books on the topic like Santa Monica Then and Now and Santa Monica Bay The First 100 Years. For more great images, both vintage and current, try Santa Monica Pier, Early Santa Monica, and Santa Monica Lifeguards. Where better to start your adventures into the history of anything than at the library? For these and other books, audiobooks, downloadable books, CDs, and DVDs, check out our online catalog at smpl.org.